Shaking, amen. There's a reasonable amount of concern, consternation that you might have, amen. Because when you go through a storm, a storm is what a storm is. It's it's just trouble, amen. Somebody and, and trouble has a tendency to make you fear, become frightened and afraid, amen. Somebody. So my question is, as I look at the text, why did Jesus rebuke the disciples? Why did he say to them, why are you so fearful? Matthew, uh, Luke chapter number 8 says, he says two things. Why are you so scared? And then where is your faith? In other words, you're supposed to have something. My question is, what happened to it? Oh, Jesus, getting good now, getting good now. Um, 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 because there's a connection. They say, number one, why are you so fearful? And where is your faith? It's because you don't have no faith. That's why you're so Okay, okay. What you're dealing with emotionally, amen, somebody, has got you all over the place because you lack some what? Because faith controls you in the midst of your storm. Your storm don't have to control your attitude. Your faith ought to control your attitude while you're going through the storm. And when you're fearful, you do some stuff that's out of character. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You, you start fussing at folk. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when you're anxious about something, yeah. and, and sometimes it's your own children. Your children can't run. Mama, I ain't having no good day today. You just start fussing. Want to bite somebody's head off because you're going through. Anybody? All right. All right. Don't make me call y'all out now. Yeah. I mean, when, you, when you're dealing with stress and strain, it'll make you change your attitude about everything. Somebody might say, good morning. You say, what's good about the morning? Amen, somebody. You've been coming to work all year long singing songs. You seem like a nice, pleasant person, but all of a sudden, you can't even get your hair on straight. Amen. And you're fussing at everybody when you come to the job. And don't nobody want to be around you. Why? Because you're going through a storm, but you're missing your faith. Your faith should control your temperament. LT, my question for the six is, why did Jesus get on a case? Watch this. Watch this now. Because um, were they supposed to speak to the storm? All right. Come on. Stay with me. Come on, preacher. Because he got up and said, Why are you so fearful with that little bit of faith? Sit up on the ship and say, Peace, be still. Probably went back down there and went back to sleep. So as he, as he walked away, what manner of man is this? They'd even the winds in the sea. Okay. In other words, in other words, wow. They were in absolute awe. They were taken aback. This man got some power. So the question is, why did he rebuke them? Were they supposed to do the same thing that he did? All right. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, he did give them power. But I ain't never seen him speak to a storm and the storm just cease. Okay. Follow me now. Follow me. Because Christ never told him to do anything that he had not done himself. Now, this is his first time speaking to the storm. First time. So he could not have had the expectation that they would speak to the storm just like him. Uh-uh. Because that wouldn't be right. Because they would be doing something that he hasn't done Amen. Yeah, but yet he rebuked them. Yeah. Why are you so scared? Why are you so fearful? And where is your faith? Oh, ye of little faith. What's the deal here? Here it is. These boats don't have engines on them. All right, now. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, now. Yeah. That's deep, preacher. Come deal on. With it. Yeah. That's deep. Oh, yeah? Uh, right. The boats don't have motors on them. Uh -huh. This is not the one you pull and you put gas in it and it propels you across the sea. Right. You got to row this boat. Okay. This boat is about 12 to 15 feet long, and the disciples have these oars. Jesus told them, listen, we're on a mission. We're going to the other side. Roll the boat. That's what that meant. Because Jesus ain't going to roll the boat. Especially when you got disciples to roll the boat. Somebody say roll the boat. Roll the boat. Somebody got to push the ship. 
Somebody got to propel the ship to the other side. But watch this. When he says, O ye of little faith, where is your faith? Why is he saying that? He's saying that, brothers and sisters, I'm sure y'all put two and two together by now, because they stopped rowing. Ooh, I wish y'all knew how deep I was. I'm deep. I'm deep. I'm deep. Um, because, because uh, they stopped. He said, let's go to the, we got a destination to reach. We got somewhere to be. Roll the boat to the other side. But when the storm took place, everybody dropped their oil. Because they got distracted. Somebody say distracted. They got distracted by the storm. So they stopped doing what Christ told them to do. Oh, let me go ahead and get y'all out of here. Y'all Y'all don't want to be excited about this word. Amen. He, he told them to put your shoulder to the wheel and roll the boat to the other side. When the ship stopped, it was the sign that the disciples stopped rowing. It's okay to row on a clear day, but you got to learn how to row on a stormy day. Oh, Jesus. Everybody can say God is good all the time and all the time. God is good when everything's going well, but can you say God is good all the time when you lost your first bone? You got to continue to roll your boat. Amen, somebody. Anybody can say glory to God in the highest on a good day, but what about when you lose everything that you got? I got a witness. His name is Job. Y'all know Job lost everything. Ten children dead. Amen, somebody. He said, the Lord giveth. The Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Y'all see this church? Watch this now. The reason that Christ knew that they were distracted was because they stopped doing what they were supposed to do. And how many times do we just quit? We just, we just stop. God got a calling on your life. A powerful calling. Go through a storm. Master, care thou not. This is about me. Y'all didn't hear him. Y'all didn't hear him. They didn't, hear him. they didn't say the ship. They didn't say you, master. They say, do you care not that we, this, this, this is about me. See, your storms ain't about you. Amen. Your storms are meant to correct you or perfect you. But you got to know that God allowed the storm to come. Oh, y'all don't like me this morning. Y'all don't like me this morning. Listen, listen. Your storms come by permission. Your storm has come to correct you. In other words, you're walking in the wrong direction. You got the wrong attitude. You got the wrong mindset. And your storm came to blow you back in line. 